Now that's what I call a spectacular backyard, the majestic Megalong Valley in the Blue Mountains. So just imagine the responsibility to design a house that responds to a site as epic and as ancient as this one. It's bold, it's brave, it's the invisible house. This unique cutting edge bush retreat was designed by acclaimed architect Peter Stutchbury and in 2014 was named Australian House of the Year. Now it's called the Invisible House because when you approach it by car, you don't see anything until you get to these rusting steel boxes. <laughs> and they're just the tip of the architectural iceberg. Their colours echoing the reds and the browns found in these eucalypts. And when it rains, the rooftop dam fills with water, giving it this great reflective quality, which makes you feel like the building is disappearing. Look, look Joe, so many homes that we visit we can classify. Yep. Their workmen's cottages, their terraces, their homes in suburbia. This one, though, is potentially arcing towards a truly unique Australian style, in that the forms are completely generated in a response to nature. And this one is definitely built to last. This is the spine of the home, and ironically, they call this the entrance gallery, and yet, Pete, not a picture to be seen, and, and none needed. No, who needs it? Look, great architecture is all about contrast, contrast in scale, contrast in materials. Here we have concrete with various finishes, just left in its off-form state, but have a look at this curving, cantilevering ceiling, seemingly being held up by this very fragile glass, the form was just stripped away to look like grain timber. Speaking of contrast, what about this, Pete? Now, this is the internal cladding that's used throughout the entire house. It's muddy tiger skin stacked stone. There's 340 square metres of it. You've got all of these pinks and burgundies and gold in there. It just adds so much warmth and detail. Best of all, this is the backstage. Let's get to the main act. <laughs> You want drama? You've got it. I mean, Pete, we have often been accused of having our heads in the clouds, but today we actually do. <laughs> and it's interesting, Pete, I've just noticed when you look around at the colour scheme and the textures in here, nothing internally tries to compete with that. That's exactly it, Joe. Architecture at this level is often what you leave out. Yeah. There is no overt detail. There's no architraves, there's no skirtings. Every decision has been weighed about getting as much as Mother Nature through every pore of this building. Yeah, however, if you do want to find a detail that captures your eye, all you need to do is look up. Look at this ceiling treatment in here. This wonderful sculptural scooping out of one of those boxes on the roof, it's just lined in hoop pine and ply, and it's basically scooped up through all of these three zones in this open plan to the north, so as much as that natural light gets in this open plan as possible. It's beautiful and theatrical. Pete, we have seen a lot of concrete bench tops in our time, but I don't think we have ever seen one before with a beveled yeah. edge. I mean, this is a cracker. I mean, this, this is formed and poured on site in one go. That takes an extraordinary amount of experience and man hours. Oh, it's absolutely magnificent. It's just held up by a simple piece of steel at one end. Yeah. There's a, there's a real honesty in this material palette. Yeah, I love the use of brass and copper that they've used for lots of the fittings throughout the home. And yet, Pete, talk about contrast. Very simple ply for all of your cabinetry. As well as the grand spaces, you also have these intimate little rooms, none more so than this bespoke little bathroom with its custom made bath and its, and its brass fittings. Now you might think all of this concrete seems a little bit cold. Well, there's hydraulic heating through all these floors, including something I've never seen. The walls of this bath have pipes running through it with warm water. So this actual bath never ever gets cold. Even here, you can experience the outdoors simply by pulling this door open. And did I say immersing yourself in the landscape? From here, you combine the forces of nature, fire, water, spectacular view. All up, there are four bedrooms in the home. 
Now I am in the second steel box and up here there are two bedrooms and a bathroom. And these rooms aren't huge, they've purposely made them a little bit smaller. Totally covered in this honey coloured ply so you actually feel cocooned and almost wrapped up in a big hug. Well a hug with a really nice view to enjoy at the same time. Pete, it's rare to walk through a home that just blows your mind from any angle. I mean, even when you look back here, you've just got this delicate ribbon of concrete that separates the levels. Now, even though it's delicate, it actually has a beveled edge which reflects the kitchen bench top. Look, I think it's deceptively simple, this house, but yeah. there's a lot of complexity in the layering in this design. But I think you're right. The key is this cantilevering, tapering roofline. It reminds me a little bit like a, like a bushman's hat <laughs> in that it's, it's shielding the glass, it's protecting the rest of the house, and look, no wonder this house has been nationally and internationally recognised. And I tell you, great news for you. If you have fallen in love with this house as much as we have, in the future the owners are planning to rent it out so you could come and stay here for a weekend. And better than that, they also have plans for an infinity pool and spa that's going to run the length of the entire home. So if you're interested, just make sure you keep checking in with our Better Homes and Gardens website for all the details. Wow, an architectural weekender. Yeah. A house for all the seasons and the ages. Yeah.